Okay, so the converse is when you flip. Um, and I believe our statement last week was if you... It was like if you do all of your homework problems, if you, if you do you, oh sorry. Okay, so if you do all of the homework, you will get 100%. Okay, the converse flips that. So instead of being if you do all of the homework, we're going to flip that. And so it's going to be if you got 100% or if you get a 100% then you did all of the homework okay. so basically like I the ah you weren't here do you know converse tennis shoes yes you know how the star is on the inside where it doesn't belong? It's like flipped. Converse, flip. So see, that'll work for you. They didn't know the shoes, so it won't work for them. Converse? Yeah. Okay. But, but it works, like if there's the star on the converse, you would think it should be on the outside where everybody could see it, but it's on the inside of the ankle, which is flipped from where it should be, so converse is flipped. And I don't know, maybe the people that invented those shoes were like math geeks and did that on purpose. I just, yeah. Okay, by conditional, if both the original statement and the converse, so in the correct order and flipped, if they're both true, then you can write a by conditional. But they have to be both true. That's really important. If one way is not true, it's not biconditional. So um, when you do that, you go, you will get a 100% if and only if you do all of the homework. Okay, and if and only if can be abbreviated with two Fs, so you don't have to write it all out. If and only if every math person in the world will know what that means. Non-math people will go, really, you don't know how to spell if? But you'll know what you're talking about, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Inverse is negating. So in the same forward order, that you originally start with, but if you don't do all of the homework, then you won't get a 100. Okay, so converse is flip, inverse is negate, and then contrapositive is both. No, inverse is net negate. Um, in math, an inverse isn't like an opposite. It's not like a negative, though, so I don't want to say that. Um, inverses undo things. And negatives undo things, or knots, rather. Not negatives, but knots undo things. Uh, the contrapositive but does both. So if you don't get a 100, then you didn't do all of the homework. Now, in this class, because I grade your homework for completion and not correctness, that original statement, our conditional statement, if you do all of the homework, you will get 100%. That's true. And the converse, if you got 100%, then you did all the homework. That's also true. So in this class, the biconditional will work. The if and only if. 
in a class where that initial statement is not true, where say they grade on correctness on homework, that makes that first statement false, then you couldn't make the biconditional true, like you couldn't write that. So um, in this particular case, the conditional is only true in this environment. So if we were talking about math, like logic, it needs to be true in all environments. So we would have to say that that first statement is false in general, which would mean we couldn't write the biconditional. Does that make sense? Well, just because if you were in another math class, the teacher might grade, actually grade, grade the homework, and then that's no longer true. Now, in that type of class, though, the second, the converse would still be true because if they graded all the homework and you got 100%, that means you did it all, right? So sometimes they're both true. Sometimes one or the other is true and it may not be the original statement that's true. It may be when you flip it that it becomes true. Sometimes the, um, the inverse can make it true. And then there's no set rule for like if one, like if the, if the conditional is true, then the converse is true or, or false. There's not a rule for that. The only rule there is is if the conditional is true, the contrapositive is true. Those are the only two that will always match. And if the conditional is false, then the contrapositive is false. And remember on Thursday, we had said the, the way you tell if it's false or not is if you can find a counterexample. So in this case, if you do all of the homework, you will get a 100%. Your counterexample would be a teacher that grades the homework which would make that false. This is why conditional statements are the foundation of logic, okay? And we're talking about formal logic. And as a matter of fact, you can actually take classes in college just on logic and creating logical arguments. And the basis for formal logic is a conditional statement. If this, then that. And if you talk about um, formal logic, there's something called a syllogism. That's the structure. And it's if this, then this. So that, then this. So that, then this. And it, it creates like this chain of events that gets you to your conclusion. So that's basically what we do in math is we use formal logic. It may not look the same as formal logic in like a logic class because we're not writing these big paragraph things. We're mathematicians, we don't like to write that much. So we're like, oh, here, symbol this, and like, so let's put it in a T-chart and make it smaller. But it's the same process. We're saying, okay, if this, then this. Okay, and then that means this. Okay, and then that means this. So it's all if this, then this. It's just the this on the first sentence becomes the if on the next. Like, and, and it creates a structure. So um, they are used daily by advertisers and politicians to draw the conclusions that they want you to draw. If you learn formal logic, you can almost never lose an argument because formal logic is, yeah, it's logic. And if you can, if you have logic then on your side, then it's really hard to basically end up going, oh yeah, well, so. They don't have any way to counter it. Okay, so here we have the statement, if Marina does all of her homework, then she will get an A in the class. Okay. The hypothesis is the if part. Okay, so you do need to be able to, oops. If you do need to be able to recognize those, now you don't have to write it out like this. If you want, take the if part and write hypothesis or hype hypothesis and then the then part
lost my recorder. Did I? Maybe not. It's probably still recording. All right, so we label the hypothesis, label the conclusion. All right, so is it true? I don't know, maybe. Uh, she does her homework, but she fails all the tests. She's not going to get an A. You know, so this is not necessarily a true statement. And this right here, this question is our counterexample. And there could be an infinite number of counterexamples, okay? Or there could be one. But you only need one counterexample to prove that a statement is false. You don't have to find every counterexample. If you find one thing, abs any, any one thing that makes the statement false, then the, the statement's false, period. So in this case, if Marina does all of her homework, then she will get an A in the class. Well, if she fails the test, doesn't matter if she did all her homework, she's not getting that A. That's our counterexample. This sentence is false. Okay, so the converse, that's where we flip. If Marina gets an A in the class, then she has done all of her homework. So all we did was took the first part and the second part and we switched them. We made the then, the if, and the if, the then. The inverse, we keep it in the same order, but we make it negative. So if she does not do all of her homework, then she will not get an A in the class. Okay. Now, we said the original statement was not true. Is the converse true? If she gets an A in the class, then she's done all her homework. Not necessarily. I guess it really kind of depends on how much the homework is weighted. If the homework is weighted small enough, there's a chance, but we can find a counterexample. If the homework is half of her grade and she didn't do it all, then she's not going to get an A. So we can say that this is also false. The neg negation, the negative, the inverse. If she does not do all of her homework, then she will not get an A in the class. It could be true. Again, it depends on how much the homework's weighted. If the homework is only just a little itty bitty tiny piece of her grade, there's a chance she could still get an A. The likelihood is really small though. But we're going to have to go ahead and say false because there is an example we can think of that would make it not true. And then the contrapositive, if she does not get an A in the class, then she has not done all of her homework. So this is flip and negate. So you put those two together to get the contrapositive. And we're going to go ahead and I told you the contrapositive and the conditional have the same truth. So if one's false, so is the other. By conditionals, both the original conditional and the converse, so both directions have to be true. And by means two, like bicycle has two wheels, bifocals has two focus areas. So by conditional means two directions have to be true. So we can't use marina because it's false. We said it was false. We found counterexamples. So here's our conditional and our converse, and we know this is true. If you are a native Californian, you were born in California. If you were born in California, then you are a native Californian. Does everybody agree that that is, both of those statements are absolutely true. Does everybody agree with that? So you don't have to write the same statement because you were born in California? Yeah, we're going to write the biconditional, actually. 
Yeah. So what we've got is if this is true and this is true, then we can write the biconditional. And the biconditional is you are a native Californian if and only if, again, you don't have to write that out, you can do that, you were born in California. Now, on a biconditional, the direction as to which part has to come first and which part has to come second, it doesn't matter. So you just write it the way that sounds best. Like in this case, I wrote you're a native Californian if and only if you were born in California because in my head that sounded better than you were born in California if and only if you're a native Californian. But they're both legitimate. They're both true. I just like the way this order sounded better. So the order doesn't matter on these. So just write it the way it sounds best to you. I could say a triangle is isosceles if it has two congruent sides. Okay, um, I, you know, I could rearrange that sentence. The if part, the two congruent sides, will still be the hypothesis. The part that comes after the if is always the hypothesis, even if it's the second part. Um, so, having given you the answer, that's my hypothesis. It is isosceles is my conclusion. Okay. Um, try to write the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive of these. You don't have to write the original. You can just write the converse is the flip. Inverse is a negate. And contrapositive is both. Um, converse, if she love is a dog, then she is a terrier. Okay. Uh, first statement, if she's a terrier, she's a dog. That's true. Terriers are dogs, right? But if she's a dog, does that mean she's a terrier? No, because there's like 50 bazillion other kinds of dogs that she could be. Especially all the new made up ones, Labradoodle and Chewini and Sharpoodle. Pomsky? Was that like a Skipper Key and a Pomeranian? Pomsky, okay. I used to have a Chewini. No, do you know Chewini, Chihuahua, Dachshund, Chewini? Yeah, she was. Okay, inverse, negative. So if it is not raining, then Charlie, Charlie does not carry. Does not would be grammatically correct, but I don't teach English, so... If it's not raining, then Charlie does not carry an umbrella. If it is raining, then Charlie carries an umbrella. Both of these actually would be false. Because maybe Charlie doesn't like the sun, so he carries an umbrella when it's not raining. Or maybe he's Charlie Chaplin and he just carries one. Because it's his like walking stick and he does twisty things with it. You never know. Okay, contrapositive, we want to flip it and make it negative. So if Lauren does not wear a dress, <coughs> then she is not a girl. Okay, so we flipped it and we negated it. Okay, both of these are decidedly false because there are plenty of girls out there that don't wear dresses, and just because you're not wearing a dress does not mean you're not a girl, right? 
the fashion industry would collapse if you had to wear a dress all the time because you were a girl.